is so classy. Every cab has its own butler. Actually, I'm not a butler. I had already hired this cab when you got in, but the more the merrier and all that. <laughs> Make with the tea, Jeeves. Yes, very good, sir. Hi, uh, yeah. Today we're learning English with the Simpsons in a hilarious episode where they head to the United Kingdom. Not only will you learn lots of vocabulary and pronunciation, but you're going to learn a lot about the culture and what they got right and wrong in this funny episode. But first, let's see what Indu Urja says about our lessons. They say that they watch our lessons every single day, and you can too because we make three new lessons a week so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. So hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single one of our new lessons and you can join our community of more than 3.8 million learners around the globe. Up in the morning and after school The teacher is teaching the golden rule Hello, welcome to the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Tony Blair? Why are you greeting lowlifes like us at the airport? because I want to encourage all the world to come see the beauty of 21st century Britain. Would an American dollar encourage you to leave us alone? No, but thank you. Tony, I mean, Mr. Prime Minister, what should we see first? There's so much to see here. Parliament, Stratford-on-Avon, the White Cliffs of Dover. Oh, and you Americans love castles. There's a huge one in Edinburgh, the city where I was born. The place I was born is now a gator farm. Smashing. Maybe you could give us a personal tour of your country. I'd love to, but I'm late for an appointment. I'm greeting a lovely Dutch couple at gate 23. Cheerio. Wow, I can't believe we met Mr. Bean. American history, practical man. Hello, welcome to the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Tony Blair? Unlike the US and many other countries, the head of government in the UK isn't called President, but Prime Minister instead. If you're a Simpsons fan, you would know that this show is full of guest appearances throughout its 32 seasons. In this particular episode, Fox got Tony Blair, the then Prime Minister of the UK, to voice his cartoon character. Prime Minister Tony Blair? Why are you greeting lowlifes like us at the airport? To greet means to say hello to someone or welcome them. When you work the door, the main things are to greet the visitors and toss out the troublemakers. Ah, the old greet and toss. No problemo. In everyday English, we usually say, say hello. Whoa, whoa. Gentlemen, say hello to Springfield's newest supermodel. You're a lucky man, Homer. Lowlife describes a person with a very bad reputation, often involved in criminal activities. Oh, Monty, you saved me. And to think I was once in love with that dirty lowlife, with his arrogant smirk, gutter mouth, tough guy attitude, macho tattoos, hair that can't be tamed, prison sculpted body. Uh -uh. I'm sorry, Monty. However, Bart doesn't mean this sense of this word in this clip. The joke seems to be that next to the very Prime Minister of the UK, they, as normal people, would be considered lowlifes. Because I want to encourage all the world to come see the beauty of 21st century Britain. To encourage means to give someone the courage or confidence to do something. Common ways we usually say this is to encourage somebody to do something and encourage somebody in something. Take a look at these examples. Gee, I wish we could explore a little more of Italy. Marge, are you encouraging me to be irresponsible? Why don't you encourage him to get us some health insurance? Why, you little stu- The British and Americans pronounce this word differently. In the UK, we say this as encourage. And in the US, we say it as encourage. The difference is in the vowel sound. We say it as uh. And we say it as uh. Note the difference in how Tony Blair and Homer say it. Because I want to encourage all the world to come see the beauty of 21st century Britain. Would an American dollar encourage you to leave us alone? If you ask someone to leave you alone, you ask them to stop annoying or interrupting you. Huh. <laughs> 
Huh? Did you make that awful effigy? Hey, leave my teammate alone. Lisa's your teammate? <laughs> What's so funny? I'm better than you. In our Fluent with Friends course, we'll teach you important pronunciation tips just like this one to help you avoid making mistakes. Of course, as well as understanding real native speech, using correct pronunciation, and of course, laughing along with all the jokes. The best part is you can try that absolutely free right now with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description box below to sign up now. Tony, I mean, Mr. Prime Minister, what should we see first? We use shall to make a suggestion, usually in the form of a question. So, shall I pick you up and eat? Well... Here, Marge asks for a suggestion, so that's why she uses shall in her question. What shall we see first? Here's a similar example. So, what shall we do tomorrow? Go grousing? Or if you'd rather stay home, you could sing while I accompany you on the clavichord. There's so much to see here. Parliament, Stratford-on-Avon, the White Cliffs of Dover. The British Parliament is inside the Palace of Westminster. This is a marvellous building in the heart of London and is a must-see if you're visiting the city. He also mentions Stratford-on-Avon, which is a medieval market town in England's West Midlands and famous for being the birthplace of William Shakespeare. The White Cliffs of Dover are cliffs, as you can see in the picture, of striking appearance due to its chalk composition. Oh, and you Americans love castles. There's a huge one in Edinburgh, the city where I was born. So Tony Blair is talking about this castle in Edinburgh, Scotland. And for us Americans, when we come over to Europe, because we come from a newer country, we don't have any castles, so we really want to see all of these really old buildings that people have here over in Europe. But I think for Brits, it's probably something that's so commonplace that you don't find it very interesting, right? No, so I kind of understand this one. I guess that's why they make the comment here that you Americans love castles because it's more of a novelty for you. Exactly. Whereas for us, it's not due to the history of the country. The place I was born is now a gator farm. Smashing. So this is just to show like a huge contrast of where Homer Simpson comes from and Tony Blair comes from. So a gator farm, would be an alligator farm. Gator is short for alligator. And this is an animal that we have in the south of the United States, mostly in Florida, that is very similar to a crocodile. Tony Blair replies with smashing, which is another way of saying great. However, in the UK, we don't really use this word that much anymore. We would probably use brilliant or fantastic instead. Gotcha. So in the USA, we also have a lot of different words that you can use to say good if you want your conversation to be a little bit more interesting. Then you might want to watch this lesson so that you can add them to your vocabulary. You can find that link down in the description below. But just to give you a few of them right now, one that we would say a lot is awesome. I think Americans even overuse this and it's a huge stereotype, but it's one that you will really fit in with if you use. And also we use lovely, but I think this is even more common in the UK, right? Yeah, I think this is definitely one that Brits would use a lot more. Mm. And then we have words like superb, terrific, or outstanding. Maybe you could give us a personal tour of your country. I'd love to, but I'm late for an appointment. I'm greeting a lovely Dutch couple at gate 23. Cheerio. <laughs> We often say I'd love to, but to decline an invitation, offer, etc. in a delicate and polite way. Then we specify the reason why we can't accept that invitation or offer. Well, golly, I'd love to chat, but my son's been kidnapped. You haven't seen him, have you? Caucasian male between the ages of 6 and 10, thinning hair. Over there. Want to come with me, Daddy-o? I'd love to, honey, but Daddy has to go to a beer drinking contest today. Cheerio. Wow, I can't believe we met Mr. Bean! So cheerio is another way to say goodbye, but most people in the UK don't really use this word anymore. It's more of an old-fashioned one. Yeah, I think it's just that Americans think that Brits still use this word. Yeah. <laughs> Tell my beloved wife my last thoughts were of her. Blinding and torturing Abe Simpson. Cheerio. Then we get two extra references to British pop culture. First, Homer for some reason thinks he just spoke to Mr Bean, who is this popular British sitcom character. Then the Prime Minister goes away in a jetpack. 
which together with the music is a reference to James Bond, a classic of British cinema that practically every American is familiar with. We're big shot tourists from everyone's favorite country, the USA, so give me some free maps and none of that dry British wit. I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Thank you. Look, it's J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter books. You've turned a generation of kids onto reading. Thank you, young muggle. Can you tell me what happens at the end of the series? He grows up and marries you. Is that what you want to hear? Yes. Well, Marge, you got to admit, I've been on my best behavior this trip. You punched out three people on the street. That was over soccer results. Can you believe they gave Giggs a yellow card in the box? Do you understand any part of what you just said? I understand the word gave, unless it means something else in this country. In the beginning of this video, we see Marge's first reactions to the UK. England is so classy. Classy means fashionable and expensive. Example, we had dinner at a classy restaurant. So this is actually a stereotype that we Americans have of British people, which we can see throughout the episode. And really, it's just we think that they're more sophisticated than we are across the pond. I didn't actually know this, so <laughs> it's actually quite interesting watching this episode mm -hmm. and, and knowing that. It's, it's quite, quite flattering, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say it is. <laughs> Every cab has its own butler. Actually, I'm not a butler. A cab is a taxi. While in the US cab is more common, in the UK you'll hear taxi more often, but we refer to this type as a black cab. A butler is a main male servant of a house. The stereotype being depicted here is the idea that every British house has its own butler. Of course, that's not true. Butlers works in great homes, mansions owned by aristocrats. They aren't nearly as common in the UK as they are in TV and films set in the UK. But the more the merrier and all that. <laughs> Make with the tea, Jeeves. Yes, very good, sir. We may say the more the merrier when we want to show that we're happy for other people to join us in what we're doing. Example, do you mind if I bring Claire? No, of course not, the more the merrier. Then he says, make with the tea. Make with something is a way to say bring, give or do something. It's not very polite though. The point is, when I'm cranky, nobody likes me, sweet pea. Let me live as a happy man for my remaining 30 years. Come on, come on, make with the Laffy Juice. I want to take Grandpa to have his belly button pierced. Perhaps the most common British stereotype is that we're huge tea drinkers. That's about right though, because we do love our tea. If you're enjoying this lesson, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson we made where the Simpsons go to Australia. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch that lesson next. Make with the tea, Jeeves. Yes, very good, sir. Jeeves is a generic term for a model, valet or butler. Here's a clip where Jerry Seinfeld has a funny take on this name. You ever notice a lot of butlers are named Jeeves? <laughs> You know, I think when you, when you name a baby Jeeves, you've pretty much mapped out his future, wouldn't you say? Not much chance he's going to be a hitman, I think, after that. In the early days of the internet, this search engine called Ask Jeeves was popular in the UK and the US. We're big shot tourists from everyone's favorite country, the USA. What do you think big shot means? Important, dangerous, foreign. We say that someone is a big shot in a certain area or field if they're an important, influential or powerful person. Example, he's a big shot in country music. So give me some free maps and none of that dry British wit. Wit is the ability to say things that are clever and amusing. Brits as well as the Irish are known for their sharp wit. Beautiful dinnerware, Mrs Parkfield. Thank you, Lisa. 
They were made for the finest family in Britain. I don't know how we ended up with them. Uh-oh. Should I laugh? Is that dry British wit or subtle self-pity? Ooh, they're staring at me. Better respond. <laughs> so British humour is often described as being dry, which means that you can't really tell whether or not we're being serious or joking because we tend to use a more serious face, so it's not so obvious. Yeah. That's so true. Definitely like a lot of Brits that I've met, I never knew if they were saying something seriously or if they were actually joking. Because we Americans, when we're being sarcastic in this way, we tend to actually like use a different tone, so it's very obvious. And something that really contrasts very heavily between American humor and British humor is that we have very common slapstick humor, which is actually like physical humor of someone falling down or getting hurt or something like this that you'll see in a lot more American shows like The Simpsons or Family Guy. Yeah, and in the UK, it tends to be the opposite. It's a bit more serious and not as obvious. Mm -hmm. So give me some free maps and none of that dry British wit. Let's focus on the pronunciation of this word. Instead of saying it word by word, none of that, he says it as if it was one word, none of that. Of here reduces to a schwa sound. And his dialogue has none of the wit and sparkle of Murphy Brown. <laughs> Music is none of my business. Look, it's J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter books. You've turned a generation of kids onto reading. Thank you, young muggle. She means here that J.K. Rowling caused a generation of kids to be interested in reading. Example, he turned me on to fine dining. I think we're lost. I used to be lost until a friend turned me on to a book. A book that changed my life. It's called Lisa is Stupid. JK Rowling calls Lisa a muggle. In the Harry Potter series, a muggle is a person who lacks any sort of magical ability and was not born in a magical family. By the way, are you a fan of Harry Potter? It's a great way to learn vocabulary and British pronunciation. You can check out all of our fun Harry Potter lessons in this playlist. Well, Marge, you gotta admit, I've been on my best behavior this trip. So far on the trip, Homer has behaved extremely well. He's been on his best behavior. However, Marge doesn't think that's necessarily true. You punched out three people on the street. That was over soccer results. A punch is a strike with the fist, meaning a closed hand. Out in this case adds the meaning that the punch resulted in the other person becoming unconscious. So it's safe to say Homer hasn't exactly been on his best behavior. He says the altercation with those people was over soccer. We use over as a synonym of about when we talk about things like arguments, problems, fights, etc. <gasps> Lisa! Is this what I've come to? Fighting over a stupid sandwich on my daughter's big day? That was over soccer results. Can you believe they gave Giggs a yellow card in the box? One thing that many Brits think sounds funny is the word soccer. In the UK and most countries around the world, we call this sport football. So in the US, football actually refers to American football, which is this sport. And we'd call someone who plays a sport a football player and someone who plays soccer a soccer player. Actually, in the US, it's quite common that we'll play soccer when we're kids. And we even have this term for a soccer mom, which is basically a mom who is always taking her kids to soccer practice, who probably has a minivan and things like this. But for adults, we don't really tend to know the rules of soccer. Maybe we'll watch the World Cup or something like that, but we're not so sure exactly what's going on. And this is why it's quite funny that Homer says this because it really would show someone who knows a lot about football when in fact he's American and he does not. That's really interesting because obviously in the UK, soccer, well, it's so, it sounds so strange for me to say soccer, <laughs> football is the biggest sport. Mm -hmm. And I think in many countries in Europe and maybe in others around the world as well. And for us to hear soccer just sounds strange because mm -hmm. It's a game that you play with a ball and your feet. Yeah, Hence I think it makes a lot more sense. The name football, yeah. yeah. And also football actually started out in the UK. So it's the home of football. That's why we also describe Wembley Stadium where lots of cup finals are played. Mm -hmm. We call that the home of football as well mm. because it's kind of where it all started. That makes sense. 
Brian Giggs is a retired Welsh footballer who played for Manchester United for many years. Giggs was known for being a clean and fair player, meaning he wouldn't commit many fouls, so that's probably why Homer seemed surprised they gave him a yellow card. In case you don't know, a footballer gets a yellow card as a warning for a serious foul on a player of the opposite team. If it's more dangerous or violent, then the footballer gets a red card and gets ejected from the game. Hello, welcome to the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Tony Blair? Why are you greeting lowlifes like us at the airport? Because I want to encourage all the world to come see the beauty of 21st century Britain. Would an American dollar encourage you to leave us alone? No, but thank you. Tony, I mean, Mr. Prime Minister, what should we see first? There's so much to see here. Parliament, Stratford-on-Avon, the White Cliffs of Dover. Oh, and you Americans love castles. There's a huge one in Edinburgh, the city where I was born. The place I was born is now a gator farm. Smashing. Maybe you could give us a personal tour of your country. I'd love to, but I'm late for an appointment. I'm greeting a lovely Dutch couple at gate 23. Cheerio. Wow, I can't believe we met Mr. Bean. England is so classy. Every cab has its own butler. Actually, I'm not a butler. I had already hired this cab when you got in, but the more the merrier and all that. <laughs> Make with the tea, Jeeves. Yes, very good, sir. We're big shot tourists from everyone's favorite country, the USA. So give me some free maps and none of that dry British wet. I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Thank you. Look, it's J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter books. You've turned a generation of kids onto reading. Thank you, young muggle. Can you tell me what happens at the end of the series? He grows up and marries you. Is that what you want to hear? Yes. Well, Marge, you gotta admit, I've been on my best behavior this trip. You punched out three people on the street. That was over soccer results. Can you believe they gave Giggs a yellow card in the box? Do you understand any part of what you just said? I understand the word gave, unless it means something else in this country. Hey, G.I. Joe, your sign's broken. We're already in Australia. Actually, sir. The embassy is considered American soil, sir. Really? Look, boy. Now I'm in Australia. Now I'm in America. Australia. America. I get Australia, it, Dad. America. Australia. Oh, America, that's America, enough. America. America. Australia. America. Oh! Here in America, we don't tolerate that kind of crap, sir. 